Good morning, winners. Welcome to Terry's Tips. So listen, we're going to talk about something today that I have not talked about a whole lot, but seriously, it's super necessary because I'm seeing so many of you be denied, not understand what the process is, or even understand why it's important, your debt to income ratio. Yes, I know all my realtors and all my mortgage lenders are like, yes, Terry, please do a video on debt to income ratio. Guys, if you don't know what your debt to income ratio is, if you don't understand why it's so super important, especially for real estate investing, for first time home buyers, then you seriously need to watch this video all the way through into the end because I promise you, even if you have an 800 credit score, if your debt to income ratio is not right, lenders can not approve you okay and the debt to income ratio can be super complicated with front end dti and back end dti guys if you hear lenders say dti they're talking about debt to income ratio i am going to simplify it for you i'm going to give you the basics so you can understand what it is why it's important and how to calculate yours okay get a notebook get a pen okay if you are new to my channel welcome my name is terry i am a self-employed entrepreneur and an investor and i upload videos every tuesday and thursday morning about financial literacy personal credit business credit entrepreneurship investing um specifically real estate investing and about leverage and then i'll do my nugget at the end guys so first your debt to income ratio Guys, it's so super important. I know we talk about like credit card balances and like loan balances and you guys think that you know the only reason why like paying down your credit cards is so super important is because that way your utilization will, um, ratio will be low so your score can be higher. But what you don't understand is all of those minimum monthly payments. Let's say you have 10 credit cards and they're all $25 a month minimum payments. All of those minimum payments are going into your debt to income ratio. Guys, if you are like doing all of this work, and I want you to think about this, you're working on your credit, you're working on your income, you're working on your down payment, you're working on investing, you're doing all of this work. And let's say your debt to income ratio is super high. Like, okay, you got approved, but you got approved for like $90,000. And you're like, I can't find no property for that. Like it was what, what went wrong. It's your debt to income ratio. So in its simplest terms, guys, it's simplest terms. Your debt to income ratio is your monthly debt payments divided by your gross monthly income. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to explain. So first let's talk about your income. OMG, guys, when I'm doing strategy sessions with you guys, I always start with asking you, give me a little bit more about your situation, about your goal, about your finances. And I usually ask, how much money do you make? You know, what is your monthly gross income? What is your annual income? And so many of you guys are like, I think I make 41000 Or wait, I got a raise, but I'm at fifty five now. You guys have no idea how much money you make. S listen, number one, know how much money you make per year know how much money you make per per month period like how are you guys going to be financial literate how i'm literate how are you guys going to like work on your credit how are you guys going to budget how are you guys going to save for investing and being an entrepreneur and being self-employed if you have no idea how much money you make that's critical guys and so in general with the debt to income ratio i'm going to get kind of give examples for like w2 employees people who have a regular nine to five but mind you if you are self-employed if you are an entrepreneur if your money fluctuates just for the sake of getting an idea of what your ratios are take what you've made for the year divide it by 12 okay if one month you made 10 and one month you made eight and one month you made 13 and one month you made 15 Add up what you made, like maybe maybe do like the last three months, the last six months, you can get an idea and divide so you can know how much you make. For my W-2 employees, if you have a paycheck, I want you to get your paycheck, get your paycheck. And the gross amount is going to be the amount on your paycheck before taxes. That's critical. Before taxes. So if your paycheck is $3,000, guys, before taxes, and then after tax, they take out 401k and medical and dental and all these different things. And let's say you bring home, you know, 19, or let's say you bring home 21. We're not looking at that amount. We're looking at the gross monthly income. So if your paycheck is $3,000 before taxes and you get paid twice a month, then that means your gross monthly income is $6,000. After you watch this video, if you don't know what your gross monthly income is, I challenge you, action item, pull up, look at your last two pay stubs, look at the gross amount, 
and write down what your gross monthly income is. And like I said, if you're self-employed, if you're a brand new entrepreneur, just to get at least an idea, you know, pull up, you know, look at your bank statements, look at what you made maybe the last three months, last six months, maybe the last 12 months if you have that much data and divide it by 12, you know, so you can understand what your numbers look like, okay? And mind you guys, income, income, verifiable income, this is important. What are the lenders looking at? Full-time job, you know, if you're self-employed, you know, two years worth of taxes with that business. So income is not unemployment. Income is not temporary disability or short-term disability. Income is not like workers' compensation. That is temporary employment that is going to stop, temporary income. They're looking at full-time, verifiable income. Now, depending on the lender and depending on what's going on, like you can have rental income, let's say, in general. And guys, this is where lenders sometimes vary in their guidelines. I'm giving you the general information always, always, always. I want you to be financial literate. That's what our channel is about. So ask your lender, you know, what is your debt to, what is your maximum debt to income ratio? What do you include in your debt to income ratio? If you have bonuses, if you have tips, if you have commissions, let's say you get paid child support or you get paid alimony. Let's say you have rental income. In general, if you have a rental property, let's say you own your house already and you have a rental property and you're trying to qualify for like a jumbo loan or maybe you're trying to qualify for a conventional loan or maybe you're trying to qualify for like a two or three K you're trying to qualify for some other loan where your debt to income comes into play but you already have rental income a lot of times the lenders will include the rental income if you've had it for two years so let's say that mortgage is a thousand dollars a month but your tenant is paying 1500 that property is cashed on you 500 that 500 is gonna be added to your income so it's your job, your job, your job, and sometimes these additional sources, if it's documented, ask the lender, okay? Because sometimes you guys do have extra income that can really, really help you. And then your monthly debt payments. So for you to get an accurate idea of what your debt to income ratio is, you must know what they're including. So they are not including your utilities. They're not including your spa day. You're, they're not including your cell phone. They're not including your Comcast bill. You know, they're not including your gym membership. They're not including your auto insurance. It is specifically your debt payments, guys, on your credit report. What do I always say? Pull up your credit report. Know what's on your credit report, guys. Critical, critical, critical. Pull up your credit report because say, let's say your scores are amazing, but you have $300,000 worth of debt and student loans and you make $25,000 a year. Houston, we have a problem, okay? So this is why sometimes you guys are like, well, how come I did all that work and I still don't qualify? It's your debt ratios. So what is included in your debt to income ratio? The items on your credit report, those monthly payments. In general, it's going to be things that you're kind of paying on like, like 9 to 12 months, like a monthly debt that you owe, you owe, you owe. Your car note is $300 a month. Let's say your um, credit card bills all equal you know, $200 a month. Let's say you have a personal loan that's $150 a month. Your monthly debt payments. So if you get your credit report and you look at your accounts, because that's what I tell look. Y'all better start looking, look at your accounts. You know, I teach you guys that not just looking at your score, but look at your accounts. It will say monthly payment, monthly payment. I don't care. Action item. Pull your reports and go through every single account and write down the monthly payment. So say you have three credit cards, $25 at each. That's $75. And say you have a card note and that's $500. Say you have a personal loan. That's an extra $100. Add up all of your monthly debt payments. And then you've already looked at your actual income, right? And so the monthly debt payments on your credit report. For student loans, okay, in general. We're talking, and the reason why I'm doing this too is because a lot of people are going through, and even if you're an investor, you're doing house hacking, maybe you're still qualifying your first time home buyer and doing FHA, VA, USDA, like, you know, there's different loans are going to have different requirements, but I want you guys to get the general information so you have an idea. So for student loans, let's say you owe $100,000 in student loans. In general, depending on the lender, depending on the type of financial product, they're going to take 1% of that total debt and count it against your debt to income ratio. That means for $100,000 worth of student loans, even if you're on an income driven repayment plan, guys, where it's $0 a month, they're going to count $1,000. Yes. Okay. 1,001%. So you must, must, 
must know that, okay? And sometimes that means you work on your credit score a little bit more to qualify for a different type of product that calculates it differently, but in general, 1% of the total debt. Now you may say, well, if it's $0 a month, why are they counting it? But guys, a traditional mortgage may be 15 years or 30 years. So yes, it may be $0 a month like right now for like the next 12 months, but eventually, listen, dumb things are gonna go back into repayment and they wanna make sure you, 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 you have the money to actually pay those when your student loans don't go and back into repayment, it kind of knocks you into foreclosure. So like the, the lenders, there's even like predatory lending laws, guys, since like the market crash, there's the ability to, uh, the ability to repay, like they have a responsibility to make sure you have the capacity to pay back the loan. If they kind of put you in a loan that on paper, it looks like you could not ever pay and then you default, those banks are in big, big trouble. So they're not gonna risk like their license and their whole business to kind of fudge some numbers for you, okay? So looking at your monthly debt payments, your gross monthly income. Monthly debt payments, gross monthly income. So let's say that you're all, you added up all your, let's say you add up your student loans, your um, personal loans, your credit cards, everything. And so let's say that all comes to $3,000, okay? And let's say you make $9,000 a month. That is the amount of your paychecks before, before, before taxes. You make $9,000 a month, that's your income. All of your debt payments come to $3,000. That means your debt to income ratio is 33%. Okay, you divided 33%. That's great. Okay, that means you have enough money to buy a house. Like in general, 40% under is great. Some lenders will go to 45%. Some will even go up to 50. This is where you ask questions. Let's say your credit is really strong, but your debt ratios are, uh, then that means bank number one says, hey, we only lend up to 41%. And bank number two says we go to 47%. Hey, what was a denial for one bank is an approval for another. Strategy, what do I always tell you guys? Strategy, strategy. Ask questions, what do you include? What is your maximum debt to income? So guys, what can you do to impact your debt to income ratio? You can only honestly do two things, increase income, decrease expenses. So guys, I don't know what, like I've seen so many of you with these like affirm loans and one main loans and like loans for like furniture and all kinds of stuff and appliances. It's like $600, but the monthly debt payment is like $100 or like $50. It's been like crazy. Guys, stop with all these small loans. Stop, like don't get a brand new car before you want to get a mortgage where that card note is now going to be impacting your debt to income ratio. It means you qualify for less money. Okay, and then sometimes it goes the reverse. Let's say they do your debt to income ratio, your numbers are great, and they say you are pre-qualified, right? Congratulations, pre-qualified for $350,000. Pause, <laughs> pause guys. Just because they said you qualify for $350,000 does not mean you should borrow $350,000. You are responsible for budgeting. You are responsible for knowing what you can pay. If you're paying $900 a month right now for rent and you're struggling and your new mortgage are going to prove you for is going to be $2,100, do you really want to go from $900 to $2,100? Guys, don't be house poor. And I mean it. Be smart. Sometimes getting this house is a step up, but not your forever house. It's an upgrade, but it is not the end all be all. Do what stays comfortable because you did all that work on your credit. You don't want to mess it up, right? And so increasing your income that can sometimes be you know like guys monetize your gifts if you cook really well maybe you make dinners you know one one month uh, like one week in a month that yields you an extra thousand dollars and you use that to pay down your credit cards or you have to pay off a personal loan to help your debt to income ratio maybe you're doing uber or lyft or maybe you know you're selling things on ebay or maybe you're getting a part-time job because all that virtual learning maybe you're a teacher maybe you do some tutoring like monetize your gifts and that may not be used as your income but maybe you can use that extra income to pay down some of your debt guys i have seen where five and ten dollars throws off a debt to income ratio like if a lender says we lend to 45 percent and when they do your numbers you're at 46 percent you're denied so sometimes like five dollars like that credit card payment being 25 dollars a month and you pay it down which makes that monthly debt payment a zero can be the difference between an approval or a denial guys so understand that for your debt to income ratio, monthly debt payments on your credit report, gross monthly income, okay? And in general, 40% under is great. 
Some lenders will go to 45%. Some will even go up to 50. Ask questions. Part of the success I get for clients, guys, is matching them up with the right financial product and the right lender. Amen. Look, got it, got it good. Okay, so I hope that that was helpful for you guys. Get your paychecks, find out your income, get your credit report, find out your numbers. Got it? All right, and so for my nugget today, what I want to say is that your ability to be successful is going to literally, like, literally depend on your ability to rebound, to adjust, and to come back from mistakes and from failures. Guys, too many of you guys have obstacles that happen and you maybe, you know, you're laid off or maybe somebody got sick or maybe, you know, a, a, a job opportunity didn't come through or something happened with a relationship. Let's say it's like a health goal. Let's say it's a weight goal. Let's say it's a spiritual goal. Let's say it's a relationship goal. Let's say it's a money goal. Something does not go as planned and you guys quit. You guys count out. You guys shut down. Winners find solutions. You adjust, you adapt, you get back up. Listen, the wildly successful people, it does not mean that nothing has ever happened to them. A million times, things go wrong. You bid on a house and it doesn't go through. You thought you were going to apply for a loan and you don't qualify. You thought somebody was going to give you down payment money and they don't give it to you. You don't stop. Listen, you get knocked down 10 times, you get back up 11. Your ability to adjust, your ability to adapt, your ability to be resilient, your ability to get back up is going to dictate your success because I promise you, this road to whatever your goals are is not, a, is not a line. It's like up and down, up and down. Like, let me tell you, it is crazy. So just understand that those pitfalls, those hurdles, those setbacks, they are meant to build you. Look, look, built for tough, right? They're meant to build you for the next level. So when something knocks you off of your plan, of your course, of your timeline, be mad for five seconds, suck it up and figure out a plan and get going. Your ability to succeed is going to depend on your ability to bounce back, to find solutions, to be resilient. Amen. All right. So I hope that that was helpful. Like, share, comment, subscribe, figure out your debt to income ratio and have a super amazing day on purpose.